All right, hello everybody. Um, we are back here for our fourth or fifth fountain pen review. Um, today we're going to be reviewing a pen that came in this box and the review is going to follow the same structure as it has um, previously, such as we're going to do the introduction, the parts of the pen, the writing sample with our reprinted sheet used um, in the last review of the Hero 1021 fountain pen. Um, we're then going to have the ratings and then that'll be the review. So I'm going to go straight ahead with the review. The one thing that I have to say about this particular fountain pen is it's not quite like the other fountain pens, the other four or five pens that I've now reviewed, um, simply because it has no specific name as far as I'm aware or classification um, per se. It's um, so. I have given it uh, a name myself and, you know, it's just basically what it was advertised as on the website. It's not like, it's not, for example, like a cross second century. It's not like a Mont Blanc 149. You know, it's not like a yard of lead pen or anything like that. It doesn't really have a brand. All I can say is that I, I've made up a name and that's going to be the name that I'm going to go by. So I'm go that's the only piece of information that um, you might need to know about. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the um, the introduction. Now this pen is truly a stunning pen um, to to behold with your eyes. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's really really fantastic design and um, make and general shape is just a, a fantastic pen. So this is my own name for it. This is the Woodchucks. That's the name of the web website that I bought it on. Maple Burl Fountain Pen with an Iridium Nib. So just take a look at that pen. Okay? Just take a look, of it, look at it. That is a really, really beautiful um, design uh, on the pen itself. So the pen, like I've said, is the Woodchucks Maple Burl Fountain Pen with an Iridium Nib. I bought this pen, I'm going to leave it over there, um, on the Woodchucks Wood Turning website um, for approximately about $100 or so. I can't quite recall the, the, exact, um, the exact number, uh, but I definitely think it was, it was worth it. So that's the introduction. This is, as I've said already, the Woodchucks Maple Burl Fountain Pen. Bought on woodchucks.woodturning.com, and I definitely recommend that you go have a look there yourself. I don't know if this pen is actually available anymore because when I went on the site the day after I received it in the post, the place where the pen was on the website originally, it, the pen was no longer there. Um, so you know, I don't know whether it's the only version, but I know that there are also some very beautiful pens on that website as well. So that's the introduction, and we're going to go for the parts of the pen. Now, I'm going to, it is um, a screw-on cap. There's the cap, the section, a nib, and the barrel. So I'm going to start with the cap, as always. So the cap has a lot going for it. I'm going to start with the top, and unlike some of the other pens that I've reviewed, it has a very nice feature at the top. It looks as though it's a, a sunflower of some kind. I'm not sure what to make of it. I think that's what it is anyway. And it's, um, it, it, it curves upwards from side to side on the cap. So it's definitely, it's a very prominent feature there on the top of the cap. Below that, you have more design. It seems to be quite like waves, um, just laid on top of what looks like beaded metal. And that creates a lovely effect as well. So... Then moving f farther down the cap, you have the, the clip itself with this ridiculous gemstone, I have to say. Um, I'm not a big fan of that gemstone at all. So I don't even know if it is uh, an actual gemstone. I don't know whether it's plastic or not. Um, it feels plastic, to be honest. The, the um, clip is very tight, very tight, um, but not so tight that you can't use it. Now, the real thing that cap that grabs the eye straight off is... The actual material that the majority of the cap is made from like the barrel just take a look at that it's beautiful emerald green with swirls and strokes of reflective glitter it looks like um, 
uh, paint it seems like it's been placed onto the cap itself along with lovely brown I don't know what to make of that it looks it's meant to look like wood and I have to say it looks very convincing so it, it's a lovely combination on the pen it's absolutely stunning um, design so that's the cap uh, oh sorry and below here again we have the exact same design here as we do here inside the cap there's nothing much there so that's the cap very heavy very very heavy the, the pen itself is extremely heavy because the entire pen is what I made of what I assume to be metal or some very heavy substance not resin or anything like that or plastic it's very very heavy material everything about this pen is heavy but not too heavy that it doesn't fit comfortably in my hand personally so that's the cap um, moving on to the nib the nib is uh, I see here it is written iridium point Germany and it's a medium now this nib I have had initial difficulties with when writing um, it had a lot of problems while starting up and it failed to keep a consistent ink flow while I dragged it across the page um, it would skip a lot and you had to write quite slowly with it um, I've heard of cutting or grinding this type of nib to make it more effective and more pleasant to use but I don't know how to do that and I don't really want to go poking around with a pen that I spent quite a lot on um, so that's the nib. It is two-toned. The extremities are silver and the the internal space on the nib is gold. You can also see some swirl designs by the breather hole. And then the writing is just like I've said, the Iridium Point Germany. The section is tapered and as you can see the section is, comes um, narrow slightly and then widens again at the very end. And that is effectively, in my opinion, a barrier whilst not being a barrier. Unlike the Hero 1021, which I don't think I have right with me, I do, but it's on the other side of the room and I don't want to leave, um, it, it acts as a barrier without being a barrier, if you know what I mean. The purpose of the widening of the section to the very end ju is just to stop your fingers, in my opinion, from slipping onto the nib. And I, when I say a barrier without, whilst not a barrier, there's no discernible feature, there's nothing obvious on the section to stop your fingers from slipping on. If you saw it immediately, you'd think there'd be nothing to stop your fingers from slipping. But the very gentle, very subtle curvature of the actual section itself acts as the barrier which stops your fingers from slipping onto the nib. And I think that's a very attractive feature. Now, the pen itself, I'm going to take the cartridge, the converter, excuse me, out. The pen itself takes international um, converters but it came with this specific converter. It's quite large, and I even go so far as to say it's larger than the normal ones that you can... Just get one out of my... It is quite large in comparison to the normal, the normal international standard um, converter and therefore it, it holds a little bit more ink um, and you know that's always a plus it, it, it's quite large in comparison you know I, again the pen will take a standard international converter but this one came with the pen and holds quite a bit more ink I'm just going to click that back again and I'll leave it over there for now now the barrel itself is quite like the cap it has the, ex the exact same emerald and maple kind of a, a design to it it's fantastic design to it it's really stunning um top of the pen is exactly the bottom of the barrel i should say even is exactly the same as the top of the cap with that what appears to be a sunflower um moving down you have the blind cap and then you have the same design again with the exact same what appears to be waves on beaded metal um a lovely effect again then you have the main barrel um green and maple Maple, what um what I'm assuming that is, that's the name of the actual pen on the website, the Maple Burl. And then you have the top, which is where the um section itself screws into. So that's the um the barrel. Now I have to ask if anyone knows um about something that I need to ask about. It's it's the um you probably won't be able to see it. As a matter of fact, I think you can. You probably won't be able to see it, but on the section itself, there are black patches that have been forming. Very, very, um, um, dirty black spots. 
have been forming on the silver of the section. Not forming so much here, although I can see it all right, but here they seem to be particularly bad. Now I can't figure out what it is. At first I believe I thought it was rust, but it doesn't appear to be. And I've checked inside the cap. There seems to be a little, there seems to be something in there all right, but I'm not sure whether that's the cause. Um, you know, it's, it's quite ugly. I don't like that. It's, I don't know whether it's, I don't know what it is really. It's, it appears to be just growing almost. I know that's not possible, but it almost looks as though it's growing on the, um, the silver of the section itself. Um, so if anyone has any ideas as to what it is and how to treat it, I'd be very grateful if you could put um, a comment below and uh, help me out. Because um, this is a gorgeous pen and I don't want to, I don't want to, um, to damage it at all in trying to fix it and then somehow causing a, a, a pro another problem. So that's the parts of the pen. I've gone over the cap, the nib, the section and the barrel. So that's the parts of the pen. We'll go straight on now to the writing sample, and I will just take a piece of toilet paper and dry it off because my hands are slightly damp. I was washing dishes. So, again, we have the new template. My computer flips the image, I know. Um, take my word, Nerdy and the Geek established 2014. The chosen pangram, the chosen quote, and our signature, which is John Smith, as always. Now, before I start, I just want to say how big this pen is. I mean, it is an enormous pen. It is huge. It really is. It is not possible to post this pen. It just won't work. Um, firstly, because it will be too big. It will be too big. And secondly, it doesn't fit. This section, the blind cap, is too wide for this to fit around. So you won't be able to post it, um, even if you get the pen. I don't know if it's if this is the only one. I just don't know. Um, I don't know. The pen itself sits very, very nicely in your hand. It's um, perfect for my finger length, again, the section. Um, the threads are quite deep, but again, my fingers don't rest there, so it's not a problem for me. Um, you can see it's... It fits very well in the hand, you know, there's no there's no difficulty in holding it. It's very balanced as well, it doesn't feel very back heavy at all, so it's quite a pleasant writing instrument as well. Uh, of course, the only problem that I've had is with the nib itself, trying to get, trying to sort out the nib without knowing how to do it properly, so I'm, I'm wary of trying to, um, to do anything without, with it. So, I'm going to go straight ahead with the writing sample of the what I have dubbed Woodchuck's Maple Burl Fountain Pen. So our quote is, as always, our pangram, a quick movement, a quick movement by the enemy will jeopardize six. Gunboats. So there's our chosen pangram. Um, again, the image is flipped by my computer, but you can get the general gist of the writing. And our chosen quote for today, um, I haven't actually thought of one, but I'm going to go with a quote, not by um, a historical figure, but by a fictional character, whom I, who, who I think is very, um, who the person who plays him is excellently, who, who plays this character excellently, and this quote, I think, is just, um, it just sums up the man that is being portrayed in this, um, in this episode, in this particular episode of this series, of this program. So see if you can guess which, um, what the name of the uh, series is. Obviously, you can't read it yourself, so I will say it out to you, as always. And it's not that quite a long a quote at all. So, such a waste of time, comma, he chose money over 
power. That is by who? So again, you get the general gist of the writing. It has started up quite well now that I gave it a chance to, just on the um, the writing pad here, I just started it up. I ran some water through the actual feed itself, and that really seems to have helped the ink flow. It hasn't skipped as all, at all. I, I did do that initially, but now that I've done it, it, it really seems to have um, to improved. So, as I said, the quote is, such a waste of time. He chose money over power. So who, which character says that? In which series? I'd be interested to know if anyone knows who it is. So here we go with the John Smith signature as well. John Smith. The famous John Smith. It, the pen does skip slightly on the S and a little bit on the, the beginning J and a small bit on the T that strokes out here. Um, but other than that, it seems to be working really well. Now, so that's the writing sample. We have our pangram, quit movement by the enemy will jeopardize six gunboats, our chosen quote, such a waste of time, he chose money over power, and of course, our signature. So that's the writing sample. I'll leave that over there. Now, finally, to the ratings of this pen. So the ratings go under four headings, writing experience, writing comfort, capacity slash ink usage, and design. So in writing experience, because I've had a lot of difficulty with this pen, I've given this pen a seven. In terms of writing comfort, um, I've given this pen a nine. And in terms of capacity, slash ink usage I've given this pen an 8 and design I've given this pen a 10 so that will be a total because I haven't done this um I haven't actually totaled this myself um before the review I'm very bad for that um 10 and 8 is 18 10 and 8 is 28 and 27 27 and 7 is 34. So this pen has scored 34 marks out of 40. So again, this is the uh, Woodchuck's Maple Burl fountain pen with an iridium nib, bought for around $100 on the Woodchuck's Wood Turning website. I definitely advise you to go and have a look at the pen yourself. And that's the pen. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.